Hi, I'm Nathan Oakley and this is video log number 54. I woke up this morning to a message from the Moogler. Now, if you've been watching a few of my video logs, you'll probably realise that I don't watch the news and actually had absolutely no idea that a Brit was going up to the ISS on the Soyuz. And I found out and looked at it and thought, hmm, it'd be interesting to see what they show us. And what they show us is along the lines of something that Math Powerland said in the interview I did with him a few days ago, which was that everybody seems to see, like these children are, the point of view from a square screen. So you've got all these kids watching this on TV. Now when they show the launch, I didn't see any people actually witnessing this event on the pad. And I'm quite fortunate in the respect that this is, now I'm gonna use a term that might annoy some people, but the same piss in a different bottle. I've just picked up Tiger Dan as a subscriber and he tells me that there's no such thing as bad language and they use the word piss a lot in the Bible, so that's my excuse. But that's the way I see it. It's the same old lie, just recycled and repackaged and presented for us Brits with lots of Union Jacks flying from lots of little children watching it on a TV screen. Um, so I'll pick one to debunk, which is if anybody says, well, a man has just been up to space um, to go to the ISS. He's currently, as I speak, um, en route. He hasn't actually reached the ISS yet which is the favourite for debunking these videos, which is we don't actually see it happen. What we see is a rocket taking off. We get to see about 30 seconds of footage, including it going horizontally. We don't see it go up and out into space. Now we're in an age where we've got the most sophisticated 4K cameras and the most advanced broadcasting equipment known to man at this time, and yet we don't have anything more than a 30 second clip of this rocket leaving Earth's atmosphere. And that's because it doesn't leave Earth's atmosphere. Geronism has done a superb job of tearing this to pieces time and time and time again. So we don't need to <laughs> suddenly start using new debunking methods for ripping this load of garbage to shreds because we've done it before and we can just use the same techniques. So in a moment they're going to play out um, the actual rocket taking off and when it does I'll uh, put the audio on. There's also some biblical references that it seems us British are being subjected to from the news reporting. So this news, particular news reporter used the words alpha and omega when describing the journey. Um, so in the clip that's going on behind me, we've got one of the, uh, I think it was early 90s missions um, to, I think it was Skylab that he said that she went up to this astronaut um, who's telling us all about her stories of reaching zero gravity. And then we actually go on to see the rocket take off. So I'll give it a bit of volume. Felt that quite all of a sudden. Um, but yes, very interesting. Everything seems to be going absolutely to plan. So fingers crossed that that will remain the case. I'm just watching a replay of that magnificent, fantastic launch. What's it actually feel like? What the, the thrust on your back? You really are pushed back into your seat. It's relatively comfortable because the seat is moulded. They actually make an individual plaster cast mould of every astronaut's back. Um, and that's what you actually sit inside. Um, and you're in, in this sort of lying down position with your feet and sort of very close to your bum and your knees so bent right up over. in front of you. It's going over. It's now but turning that's really horizontally. The way to cope with these G-forces. They're not pulling blood away from your head. They're just um, pulling blood a little bit more towards your back. And to be quite honest, three and a half G, which is what you'd expect to happen during a launch like that um, is, is very easy to cope with. Tim will have done 8G in a centrifuge, so he would have found this quite an easy ride, I'm sure. I mean, you see... And cut to the inside shot. So none of us have seen this Soyuz, which is essentially technology from the 60s, um, going to uh, a horizontal position. So we're not seeing it leave Earth atmosphere. It's a complete nonsense. Um, again, we, I'll go on to one point, which is with the, with the ISS itself. Um, we are theorising why it won't work en masse. All of us in the Flat Earth community have got our ideas of why it isn't working. Even Tiger Dan himself has got a theory for anti-gravity. Now, if it wasn't for people like Math Powerland and Bart Sabrell, we'd have no means of auditing their lies and disproving them conclusively. We don't have that at the moment for the ISS. We have plenty of theory. That doesn't mean it's real. And the same applies for this rocket launch. It's the same old stuff that they've shown us time and time again. There's no need for us to worry and get in a tizzy and think we need to develop new debunking techniques because it's just the same old lie. Psychopaths aren't very good at inventing new stuff, but they're very good at recycling and repackaging. And that's all this is, a rep repackaged, recycled version of something that we've seen so many times before. I've been Nathan Oakley. I'll see you in the next video.